Hi there everyone and welcome to another one of these uh, advent calendar offerings with a squeeze box and we're back in squeeze box land today with uh, this very special instrument indeed. Um, so this is a two row eight bass instrument handmade for me um, by a chap who works in Germany um, called K Albrecht and it is an absolute work of art. You may not have seen me playing this one on stage. I have to say I tend to keep it for acoustic performances only and things like that because it's so well beautifully made. I've, I, I figure that um, putting on the magnets that I'd need to play the instrument with microphones just I couldn't do it. It's, uh, it's made like a beautiful piece of furniture um, uh, in sort of figured walnut with handmade uh, mother of pearl buttons. Um, everything about this instrument is amazing and you normally associate handmade top quality instruments with um, Italian instruments or possibly French instruments. Um, there are makers around the world obviously but when you think of German instruments you tend to think of the ones that we get over here so the honers and then um, the, the the makers be, below Honer that uh, most mostly aren't making it but the old East German boxes were sort of like a sub version of Honer. Um, now what this box has done, uh, Kay has made this box sound German and also sound really posh so um, kudos because the classic English Morris dancing players uh, instrument would be something like a Honer poke work and that lovely jangly sound um, is uh, something where uh, with a lot of power to it you know um, but, but it's not very subtle uh, is 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 something that that we prize in the English tradition and this box kind of treads the balance between the two um, we'll look into it in more detail it has some amazing little things on it um, it actually has two bass stops even though you probably can't you'd normally see a big stop coming out of the left hand so but I've got one to take the thirds out with this little brass knobble here and one to take the bases out and those little stops are held in place by um, little neodymium magnets inside to make sure they never fall away from where the position you've put them in. Uh, this grill is um, something I, I love. It looks like a, I don't know, 1950s radio to me. As I say, you can't um, go and buy these ones off the off the shelf. Um, I saw him beginning to make it um, and I said I really want one of them because I, I don't actually have in the past owned one of Kay's boxes that um, there was a one row. Uh, it didn't suit my playing just the, the the style of instrument that it was. This is um, an, another kettle of fish so I don't know whether I should go inside this one should I? Um, I might not go too far inside because you know this is a an innovative maker and I'm not sure I want too many other makers knowing how uh, how case boxes are put together um, but uh, no I'll show you some of the basic inside stuff and then we'll hear how it sounds which is absolutely fundamentally the best thing about this box is what it sounds like. Okay so uh, here's the um, uh, K Albrecht A Accordions uh, two row instrument and we will have a quick look inside. Uh, I don't think I'll be giving away too many secrets. Um, first thing I'd like you to have a look at is uh, unusual for a box like this but we have a kind of um, tapered shape to this left hand uh, which is kind of reminiscent of something like a Hona Erica uh, slightly less rounded but um, yeah, and another unusual thing is this left hand strap which is a velcro adjusted one is actually quite thin um, doesn't have much of an effect in playing but uh, it has this lovely turned brass air button as well uh, that works on a switch style with a spring um, so yeah let's uh, let's get inside there um, so We've got four pins, sort of standard construction. That's it. Okay, so 
Here we have uh, inside the right hand side some very nice reed blocks in here um, made with a, a hardwood. I think it's the same. I don't, don't know. It's not necessarily the same as this, but uh, yeah. Um, so first I'm going to take these two screws off here because they take out the front grill. So you can have a look inside the front grill. Uh, there's a third one here. And now the front grill will just pop off like that. Now if you look here, this front face is the soundboard and um, we've got a metal action leading to the keyboard and these lovely mother of pearl inlaid buttons. Um, and and uh, it's unusual that the, the soundboard is the same material as the hardwood casing. It's, uh, it's the same walnut. You can see it on the inside there. And these reed blocks are attached to their soundboard uh, a way that I've not seen before. There's a bolt that goes through and attaches to these which unscrew. But what I will show you is the reeds in there. Let's see if we can see those reeds. Now these are the, um, you see the little, uh, little circles on the reeds, hopefully, just at the end. Now they're on brass reed plates and this is part of the new revived Dix um, reed line made by harmonicas in, uh, in the Czech Republic and uh, they are sublime reeds, they're absolutely lovely. Um, waxed on as usual. So we'll get that reassembled. Okay, we'll have a look inside the left hand now. Um, again, another four pins. But before we look at the bellows, uh, before we look at the left hand, um, we'll just take a chance to uh, see the lovely printing on this bellows. Sort of, uh, it's got a sort of tie-dyed feel to it. So base side down on the bellows, so we know where we are. And inside here we have these uh, interesting reed blocks. I shan't take them off because they, there's quite a lot of... Uh, they're tied together using these two aluminium straps here. And they use the same method with a bolt going through the soundboard um, as you get here. And uh, as you see, to make the instrument more compact, um, it's done this really clever thing of making the soundboard sort of have a different level here to what it has there and therefore this reed block here has a, um, a set of reeds inside there but also these flat facing ones and I have to say it has a lovely sound to it um, really lovely sound and there's no reeds facing down on the bottom and again this blocks made of the same wood as the outside um, the lowest reeds aren't on brass plates, they're on uh, aluminium plates, but they're also dicks. So yeah, interesting construction. And I'm sure that's this um, having a sort of soundboard and another soundboard here. Um, it's not really a soundboard because it's not attached to any of the reeds. Um, uh, but it's, it allows this button mechanism to go further into the middle. Uh, and having a not full size soundboard doesn't appear to affect the way the reeds sound at all. It's lovely. Okay, I'll put this back together again. Just appreciate this lovely little touch here on the air button. There's a little brass inlay in the piece of wood that raises it just slightly above the rest of the back plate. And there's all the holes where the sound comes out. What I would say is, um, if there's any downside, it's trying to put these uh, this grill back on again because <laughs> I've always had trouble doing it. Just trying to line it up with the holes where they are. There we go. 
won't call that one. So there we are, all ready to put the last pieces in place. Okay, all, but, all back together again now. Um, let's go and hear the glorious sound it makes. So let's get down and, and um, see what, what what's going on with uh, the notes we've got here. So my treble kit is in DG, um, so it's a you know, standard English tuning really. Um, a fourth button start instrument. <laughs> Here, here it's got that tremolo, um, which I, I said it's you know it's got a German sound to it. It's um, quite direct sounding. Um, it's the only instrument I've got actually because um, I've got a slightly different layout on the bottom uh, bottom few buttons of this one. Uh, it's got what they call uh, the Anahata layout, which is. Uh, a modification that the Melodeon player Anna Hatter had done and if you're out there hello Anna Hatter <laughs> I know you've watched uh, one of these previous ones um, uh, but it means that it gives you the ability to go all the way down to the low G um, by just modifying a few buttons and it actually means the G row technically ends on the D row <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so G is there, instead of, that would normally be an F sharp on, um, uh, on, on a standard um, DG layout with low notes. And then um, so the, the lowest note on the, the, the actual G row is a, is a B like it normally would be, but it's a C on the pull. Anyway, so uh, that layout allows me to play um, this tune, which I wrote on this box, actually. So on this left hand, now um, uh, my favourite instrument has uh, the lowest reeds going down to a B on my uh, my main Salter L box. And I really, really uh, any instrument I get, you know, quite often they'll have a high, higher pitched B note there. Um, and I remember asking Kay to do that, and he went a bit further. So he put a low A below that, and he played a low G below that, which is really thunderous. You don't get that on any any sort of factory German or Italian instruments. Um, so it means that the instrument is truly in G. It's rooted down the bottom there. Um, and so it gives it a real bottom end. Now the left hand can sound very delicate if you take the um, thirds uh, uh, and the low bass reeds out. But then it can sound really... Yeah, really, really nice and uh, full there. And Uh, and the one thing I'll say about this treble keyboard as well, it is the fastest uh, multi-row instrument I've got. My Reese Wesson one row is incredibly fast, um, but just I don't know if it's a mixture of those lovely harmonicas, Dix reeds um, with brass um, reed plates. Uh, that, that that makes them so sensitive and or how, whether they've just been fettled so they all play much better than my other instruments but there's a mixture between the, the the action of the keyboard and the action of the reeds means I just feel totally in control of this one um, even at the smallest um, pressures and it does play very you know Uh, very nicely at uh, really in interesting pressures. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to play a tune uh, for everyone on this one now. And it's a little um, tune I wrote um, about basically for a a friend who who passed away a few years ago now. Um, it's called Paul Johnson, and uh, he was a lovely member of the Melodian community. Just uh, 
was at all the workshops and I saw him at festivals and you know he's just always around uh, at all the events and then um, got the awful news that uh, he just sort of uh, yeah left much too early so um, this is called One for Paul. <laughs> So that's the mighty Albrecht um, two row in DG. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.